Uh, you all start again. I think this is close. It's getting close. It's been, uh, I think this is about a week and a half. Actually, I think I have this as being the ninth day. Yeah, the ninth day uh, in uh, the, the Shire of Brandonsford. And you awaken to a croaking goose outside uh, in the rising sun through your window. And uh, hobbits, uh, despite everything, stiff upper lip cheerfully about their business, as best they can at least. And even some already here in the early morning fussing outside your window. What do you do? Yeah. What's all the fuss about? Who do, you, do you say that to the, to the hobbits? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see here what the fuss is about. Um, <clears throat> I need to start wearing my glasses. Um... There are uh, two female hobbits, and uh, uh, they uh, they stop talking as you yell out the window, and they say, "Oh, uh, good morning, morning, uh, big person." And they both bow to you uh, ceremoniously, and uh, and uh, one of them, a taller one, um, that's kind of more a stouter, taller one. Uh, motions toward her friend. She says, I was just telling Christina that her flowers are lovely and I am convinced that they will make a lovely gift for someone. And she could probably sell them, all right. Even now. And uh, Christina, the other shorter hobbit, is like, No! My flowers, they're not good enough. Now, now stop saying that. Don't just be saying that just because. I don't have good flowers. And uh, we have high standards in this shire for, for flowers. And uh, the other one's like, no, I'm, I'm convinced. I'm convinced, Christina. These are good flowers. Are the flowers present? Can I see? The, can we see the flowers? Yeah, it looks like the one that she called Christina is holding some flowers. They look okay. Well, I'll tell them. Well, they, they look all right. Um, <laughs> any goblins about? <laughs> goblins? Ew, no. And they walk off. But what do you do if you see a goblin? I'll yell after them. As they're walking off, she's like, no, seriously, Christina, you should go about selling those flowers and make a proper you flower You throw business. a rock! <laughs> 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 they're wearing their helmets? Yes, of course. Yeah. So, what what is the plan for the day? Um, we need to go uh, get uh, get that sap, I guess. Yeah, we should definitely do the sap. <laughs> We've been putting it off. All right. Okay. Um, Let's um let's put our money in the bank. Oh. All right, let's let's not bring any valuables that we don't absolutely need cuz there's dang fairies. Oh, the bank. Oh yeah. Um <laughs> Anyone disagree? Trust the guy, but we should definitely put stuff in the bank. That's smart to me. Yeah. So I've got 11 arrows left, and I've got three torches. Okay. Just for stuff that we're we're, we're bringing so that everybody knows what we've got for our... Still have one flask of oil and a lantern, so if we get... Yeah. It's I've got a lantern, and I've got 17 arrows, but I don't have any oil, so... 
All right. You uh, you follow the signs to the bank, uh, and it is a stone house uh, or a stone hobbit building, still short and single story, uh, with a um, uh, a stone door. Uh, it's peculiar from the other ones. Uh, maybe one of the few other stone structures in in the Shire, other than uh, other than Brandon's house. So Darlin looks at this stone structure, right? Because it's it's, it's peculiar, right? It means yeah. it is stone, and dwarves like stonework. Yeah. So like Afghans in a way. Yeah. Yeah. What do what what do you want to infer from it? Uh, like. Is it a style, perhaps? Maybe, maybe was it uh, outsourced in terms of the labor, perhaps? Yeah. Even the rocks, the stones themselves. Yeah, exactly. When you look at this, uh, you can tell that it's very yeah. unlikely, uh, especially based on your experience here in Brandonsford, that this was actually built by hobbits. Um, and it, it's very likely to have built at some point in the past by dwarves. Right, so that's something what I, I can easily tell is that I don't need. I guess I need a perception check for that one right there. Um, so I make a comment saying this must have been built by dwarves. I'm not quite sure which which clans, but perhaps you know. But definitely dwarves. You know, I can't imagine these. I don't. I almost say it. I can't imagine these hobbits building it. I'm not trying not to insult. Yes, I can see what you mean. I know I Didn't the man I say know. he would exchange gold for uh, silver for gold? Gold for silver, yeah, if you wanted. Yeah, because we got a lot of gold. Yeah, we keep I getting gold too. Like there are things that we need to to buy. I think we need to clean out whatever they've got left. Of oil and torches. Oh, they're right there. So if I remember correctly, they didn't have a lot left in the general store. But we need rations. We need well. We, we need to uh, prepare ourselves. Yeah, we're gonna have to load up. We're gonna get the shakedown, but <laughs> so be it. Okay. Quick question for the DM. I didn't quite see, maybe I missed it inside of the campaign results, the, the amount of <clears throat> gold or treasure that we had were able to divvy up um, in the last two or three sessions right there. I remember, I know the XP, I got that just fine. But I didn't quite see, I know we had a bunch of, uh, you know, earthwares or, you know what I'm saying, a lot, a lot of wares that we had picked up two sessions ago that yeah. we were giving out out of our good hearts to the people with their homes burned down. Yeah, I right. listed uh, in the XP breakdown, but I don't, I don't divvy okay. it up with you guys. I leave that up to you all. Okay. Know, as far as all tracking right. the, although uh, I think uh, Steve, I think he posted a, a breakdown right now of everything the party owns as oh. well in chat. So. Oh, see, it, it, which which one do I push in chat to take a look at it? I think it's a uh, Veil vale General Chat or something like that. Veil vale General. I'll take a look. General at Chat, yeah, the Veil. Vale, yeah. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to go above. Um... Yeah, just above the uh, Ford gifts. <laughs> yeah, I I I found the the right selector. So it's a bunch of memes in there. I think like the Blade Runner. Yeah, Bill so, General. Uh, <laughs> oh, I see it. Thank you. Yeah, um, in the bank, gold masks times thirteen, etc. Ah, are you so you guys are going to put your um? Well, yeah, what are you putting in the bank, or what are you doing at the bank? It would be a question. I said run. Well, what we've got on hand um is uh so that bank. I don't even know where that bank is. I think that's in uh, the city we originally came from. I recall us stopping at the bank and dropping stuff off, and we were only able to take uh two hundred and fifty. Oh. Yeah, but I said, like, don't worry about it, right? And I was like, ah, you can turn it into... I think we said we turned it all into gems that you were carrying. That way you could carry it. You remember talking okay. about... Okay, yeah. You, yeah. Right, yeah. Okay, so let's get rid of that. You're right. I don't remember the number, but if you wanted to store 
your gems. What is your goal at the bank? Is it to uh, store valuables, like, uh, or is it to exchange to get silver coins? Yeah. My idea is twofold. Yes, we need silver, but mainly we need to protect our gold coins from being stolen by fairies. All right. Oh, we're going to be going walking around in those woods. Okay. Um, if you open the stone door, you see a building uh, that has this also stone interior with a metal cage on the back end above a, uh, a banister. And uh, peering over the banister uh, is a man, uh, a hobbit, in a, uh, a fancy suit uh, that is darker than the suits that hobbits usually wear. And uh, he says uh, uh, in a shrill voice, Who is it? Wait. Wait, is this not the same guy we met at the bar, at the tavern? No. Looks like it's an old hobbit man um, serving as a teller. My name is Edward, my good hobbit. Oh! He pushes his spectacles up to look closer at you. Presumably then he notices that we're the big people. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, oh, big people. And in fact, speaking of big people, all of you uh, have to kind of hunch over, even the, the dwarf coming into the door. And then on the inside, you find that there's a little more ceiling clearance than usual, but it's still very uncomfortable. Yes, we need to deposit... Is, is uh, Mr... Um, Mr... Mr. Milton Everard III, is that the one? That was? that was the one. I understand you may be a part of the ex Exalted Order of the Serpent. We hear, right? Does, does, that, does he perk up when we... When I yeah, he, his eyebrow raises when you say that. Truly one of the most prestigious and maybe... Taken for granted institutions of Brandon's Fordites, I assume. Where are you guys? <clears throat> I see. Do you have an appointment to see Mr. Everard? I believe we did. We, we did make yes. an appointment last night, did, did we not? Well, that was certainly my understanding. We had a very nice conversation at the tavern. Is he here? He probably will be expecting us if you tell him the. I'm sure he'll know who we are. Mm. We brought the gold. I see. Lazy. He's on first lunch, but um, I will check. And he leaves for a long time. Um, he comes back probably an hour later. Uh, an hour? Yeah. <laughs> well, in an hour, I can't help but check the place just to see what... You start looking like I'm, Mexico. I'm, yeah, I'm sitting on the ground. Yeah. In the time, is... I just dropped all of my stuff that I was carrying. Just like left. <laughs> Everybody's place. carrying gems and sacks of gold and everything. And is uh, stacking coins just carefully and on the... putting a gem on top <laughs> of each. And, <laughs> and I, I can't help but think if Brandon's fur does fall or we decide we're never coming back here, what kind of good stuff can I see here? If yeah. this is the most will. Yeah, it's pretty Spartan on the inside, uh, and then like um, modern or early twentieth century banks, you'd have like the the bars and the and the uh, the barrier, you know, on the other side uh, where where tellers can work from. Uh, except this one only has one, and it's raised up above the ground to where it's almost near at your eye level. Would be up above where most hobbits are, uh, so they would be kind of looking down on most hobbits. Uh, and uh, you only saw one teller. Anyways, uh, eventually uh, someone comes out of a nearby doorway, also made of stone. And uh, it is uh, Fridlin Everard III. And uh, he's like, I see that you have considered my offer. Well, yes, absolutely. A most sensible offer. Oh, I, I certainly think so. Well, uh, what do you have to store? Many things, as you can see. Shall uh, 
Um, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, he his eyes grow wide. He's like, oh my. Shall I have Turpin create an account for you? Well, listen here. Uh, how long is that going to take? We've been waiting here an hour, which is entirely too long. We have things to do today. It's why we need to store our goods. Ah, yes. Uh, I'll have it done right away. Um, in fact, uh, Turpin! And Turpin comes out, this old hobbit man, and, and he's like, Turpin! Bring this to the vault. And Turpin looks at all your stuff and he's like, ah, I'll get the wheelbarrow. And uh, <laughs> he goes and gets a wheelbarrow for like all the gems and piles of gold and stuff that you have. And um, uh, we also have need of spending money, silver. There are things we need to acquire before we leave for the day. Uh, Fridolin personally gets behind uh, the uh the where the teller uh the where the teller was and gets a ledger uh, to keep a record of all of this and to provide you a document and uh a check indicating that you know that you have these things here um and uh and he says ah you'd like to trade for some silver coins that we have left i don't have uh enough for everything that you've given me but i could uh how much would you like Uh, enough to buy out the general store. You want to buy the general store? No, 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 no. You don't understand me. <laughs> Just their current stock. And 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 Fridlin is like, interesting. <laughs> well, yes, but actually, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it's an interesting idea. Uh, we, I don't think we're planning on being here for that long term. But, he, he looks a little crestfallen, like, uh, okay, I see. We, uh, we just simply need to, they were very sparsely stocked last I was there, and, and, uh, we didn't have the silver, but we need most of what they have, at least in torches, flasks of oil, etc. So, what would cover that? Oh, uh... Maybe, uh... What was the price? What did he quote? Something ridiculous. 80 silver for a... It was something crazy. It's basically for, uh, twice the regular price because of their shortages. But then yeah. in silver, that's like a hundred times that. So if it's, you know, 20 gold, it's 400 silver pennies. How much silver? Let's convert 750 gold pieces over. That should do about right. How much did you say? I'm recommending about 750s. Or 700 gold pieces. That's about 7,000 silver, right? You've got... That's uh, more than... Well, I guess, actually, if everything's in the bank, you, got you that. Really have to worry about exactly how many there are. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... Yeah. Well, that's... Well, maybe yeah, I'm like, looking at what uh, we have. That sounds like you're ready to uh, take about as much silver as I can offer, I'm afraid. Uh, so I'm sure that... When the town hall meeting happens, you'll remember the patronage of the Order of the Serpent in Brandonsford's time of need, of course. Oh, there's no doubt. Yes. Well then, the best I can offer you is, uh, I can <clears throat> do 3,000 silver pennies. That, uh, that should be good, and then we can go buy what we, whatever we can and come back and drop it back off. Yeah. That's probably, I was about to mention, 300 silver pennies is nearly 300 pounds. Um, I think, so. We're going to need that wheelbarrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if everybody carries bags of coins across town, you could do it. But you all are like, chink, 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 like, like chinking so, your so, way all the way there into town, these giant bags of silver coins. Which okay, go ahead. So he's he's basically gonna he's no I'm I'm saying is he's basically offered to wash our money, wash our gold for us. What? Wa I'm trying it? to use it. Yeah, yeah. Wash our wash our gold. Mm, yeah. Laundering, laundering, oh, yes. laundering. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. <laughs> I'm trying to make him a new term right here. You know. Yes. <laughs> you know, like 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 there's no hackers in Star Wars, but there's slicers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. 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 
he would happily wash our money. <laughs> yeah, he's Anyways, all I'm about sorry, like that. No. no, no, he's ready to he's ready to buy out Cedric General Cedric's general store. He doesn't even care. Do you guys go yep. to the this general store next? Yep. <laughs> slink, slink. Yeah, exactly. You all eventually make it across town and. Uh, um, a, uh, a stocky, bushy mustached, uh, wide hobbit, uh, is, uh, almost dwarf like hobbit is, uh, stalking a store and he's like, who's the, oh, oh, it's you. Oh, as soon as he sees Edward and he goes back to work. I'll wait outside. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Okay. I guess I'll take Edward's bag inside with my other. You haven't met Cedric, two right? Bags. Oh, I haven't met him, but I'm also carrying two bags of silver. Right. Bashaw takes the bag and goes chink, chink, chink. <laughs> I mean, we're gonna need all we need, the rations you got. Probably. We need, we need the rations. We need the torches. We need the oil flasks. Um. So you know, it's not so much that I need any of. Like we all need all of it, really, because it was. I'm picturing you kind of like leaning in through the window. <laughs> um. Oh, I don't know why I always have a hard time finding that. Okay, so <clears throat> first of all, uh, when. Uh, uh, Warden comes in with uh, all this money, uh, Shaw and others behind him. Uh, he sees you, and you, he sees that you have these massive bags of coins, and he's like, "Oh, another big person! Oh, well, oh, oh, that's oh, oh, that's a lot of money. Oh, uh, but, well, <clears throat> he like wipes off his uh, his work attire and and stands up tall. He's like, "How could I help you, sir?" And he bows. Uh, to uh, uh, to warden. No need to treat me any differently. I'm just the fisherman. Uh, we need some uh, torches, rations, and uh, what else did we need? He kind of looks back towards Pashal. Oh, oh, and oils, oil flasks. Yes. Uh, oh, you took over for old Giso. Poor Giso. Uh, Giso, you said you're the fisherman now. Yes, I am the fisherman now, yes. Oh, Giso had a discount. I'll have to give you that then. All right. Uh, let's see. Um, he just grins. <laughs> awkwardly grins. <laughs> um, all right, so what let's see. Giso? Giso the fisherman? He died in the in the goblin. Goblins, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so if you all have the equipment list... You can buy anything you need except Wolf's Bane, and I'll give you the calculation for it. Except Wolf's Bane, uh, you can't get... Um, there's a limited supply of iron rations. I'll say that there's five of them. I can't remember how many I said before, but I remember there's a limited amount, like five or something. Um, you can't get a mirror. Um... Looks like you already have one. Or holy symbols or holy water. But I think you could get anything else. You wouldn't be able to get thieves tools either. Or wine here. This isn't where you'd be able to get wine. Should have thieves tools and... Which is potable, not exactly wine, but... So the calculation for buying it, I'll just leave this up to you all, um, is basically... Um, twice the amount in gold and then because it's in, in because it's silver um that makes it 10 times that and then you can subtract uh 20. so for example a lantern is 10 gold pieces uh so that would make it 20 gold pieces which is 200 silver pieces which is 180 silver pieces for a lantern or for torches it's one gold piece so now that makes it you know, 20 silver pieces. Ah, uh, that's too much. I'd say that's a tenth if it's a different decimal place. So then that would make it uh, uh, 18. 18 silver pieces for a thing of torches. Et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense? About 20% mark off? Yeah. Or 10% or whatever that is. 10% I think that is. 
Okay, I'm getting a lantern and some oil. So that's... I'd like for just a fistful of arrows. Not a whole quiver, just a fistful. Dollars. <laughs> if you don't want a quiver of arrows, you just want a fistful of arrows? Yeah. They've got arrows? Have, I have some, I just need a bit more. Now, you did confirm that there is a Fletcher... <laughs> Yeah, a boy, a boyer in town. I'm glad that you reminded me because I, I got that wrong the first time. You would need to go see the boyer, but yeah. I, I will say that. Yeah, don't worry, you can go see the boyer and and. Uh, I need to get a short. I need to get a bow, if it's possible. I need to get a bow. Oh, okay. Um, I've been I've been sadly lacking in the yeah. missile weapon category since the beginning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't hurt for uh, some of us. All right. Uh, you said there was no no holy water available, or just uh, no holy water. Yeah, no, no holy, holy symbol, water. but no holy water, okay. no holy symbol, no wolf's mane, uh, no thieves' tools. Uh, right. Or wine or garlic. oil. You can buy oil, right? Oil yeah, flasks. Yeah, everything else though. Yeah, and only a limited supply of iron rations. I would say five total. Right. Uh, but standard rations you could get, but you would get that at the tavern. You get that at the inn. It's just food, is what that is. Um, and anyways, uh, let's see, a quiver of 20 arrows, so if you got 10, that would be, uh, that would be 5 is, uh, 50 minus, that'd be like 35, or, four, I'm sorry, 40 silver pieces for 5, or for 10 arrows. So How much is it, 20, 20 silver pieces for 10 arrows, or for, uh, I'm sorry, for 5 arrows, you said a handful. A bow is a, uh, let's see, a short bow is 50, is 500, is probably uh, uh, so uh, 480 silver pieces. Does anyone object to that expenditure? No. Nope. I support it. <laughs> the more okay. people can poke things from a distance, the better. Uh, yeah. A quiver of arrows for 20 if you need. Do you have arrows then? I, I don't have arrows. Okay, uh, that would be, um, uh, let's see, 50 minus, it'd be 40, uh, 40 silver pieces for a quiver of 20 arrows. So 520 total for bow plus arrows? Yeah, I think so. And then I got a lantern and some oil. Dave, you got an oil too, right? Yeah, I got oil. Yep. I'll put it down. Two oil. And this keeps I'm coming gonna... up that basically uh, when when um, Warden is making the transaction, he keeps getting a, a discount on behalf of uh, poor old Giso. Tinderbox. That's nice. What else is people getting? What's yeah. this bow? Is it a short bow? Was it D6 or what is it? Uh, well, you could get a long bow because there is a Fletcher. Uh, it's up to you. They do. <laughs> oh, uh, they do the same damage. Um, a long bow has a longer mm -hmm. range, and that is the difference. They don't even possess different features. They just, the longbow shoots further. A longbow is almost twice the price of a short bow, though. Nah. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's not a character for me to get a short bow. I like to get a short bow, too. So. For 80, so it's another 520. And 30 arrows, of course. It's coming twenties. Oh, twenties. I'm sorry. Well, the last thing I wanted to look over is because I'm getting almost. I only have one sorry. spot available for my inventory to, to carry anything extra, so I think I'm not gonna buy anything else. But I did take the magic or the kite shield from the tomb. I don't know if that's magic or not, but I'm just noting that that's in my inventory. So. Yeah, and you could take it somewhere to have somebody look at it, of course, um, but. Uh... You're just noting that's in your inventory? 
Okay. Um, oh, what was I going to say? And everybody does have food and a water skin, right? The last group, uh, yes. the Swords and Wizardry game, two groups <clears throat> went out in the woods with no water skins. Uh, different characters. Oops. Oops, yeah. So I'd like to get also a uh, grappling hook and 50-foot rope. The And uh, in this book, it says, I know they had silk ropes, but silk sounds like it's, it's lighter, a little yeah. more expensive. Yeah. Uh, I don't have... So a, it's fit... Yeah. Uh, there, I don't have a silk rope. This is an OSE. I just have rope 50 feet. Yeah. Yeah, one gold, gold piece. It, it would be 10 gold pieces for... I, I, I'm okay with hemp rope. We can burn the hemp for something else. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's see. A rope is... Um, so yeah, I've got some rope. So we, if we get fifty feet, that'll be a, at least a hundred between us. I also more. have, Good. I also have fifty. Okay. Good. So that would be yeah. a, uh, eighteen silver pieces, and then a uh, a grappling hook would be fifty, forty. <laughs> Wait, no, I have to double that too. So that would be twenty-five, which gold pieces, which would be. 500, 480, 480 silver pieces. 480 silver pieces for a grappling hook. All right. Okay, you get the grappling hook already, so um, I think you got grappling hook accounted for. Two gold pieces. Who's, uh... Okay, who, who has a lantern? Rabbi's about a lantern. lantern. All right, so there's two lanterns around, and I have a... Three lanterns. Three lanterns, great. I only have one flask of oil. Okay. (laughs) Yeah, I only have one. I also have one. Okay, so y'all can have mine. I'll carry it, I guess, since I'm carrying it. It's helpful to carry it, but just so you know, I've got one. You're all saying all this stuff, and Cedric is like, "Uh, yes, yes, and then he's writing down on his ledger, and he's running into his inventory and bringing stuff out and putting it down and and looking (laughs) at the bags of coins with big eyes and everything. He's all like, whoa, I'm going to take a grappling hook, too. Well, actually, we need two ropes, and he's just like, (gasps) you know, and just keeps getting more stuff. Trying to keep up with the, uh, the amount we've got here. All right, how many torches does he have around? Uh, Did we already uh, buy... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Did we already buy them out last time, or uh, I'll say that I mean torches. I don't know what I said last time. I think I said that lanterns and oil were rare, but torches are not going to be hard to come by. Okay. Uh, and so I'll just have that as, at its regular price. I, don't, I maybe said that they were expensive, but that doesn't make sense to me. It should be easy enough to replicate torches. Anything else? Oh, yeah. Um, you want to get the uh, iron spikes, 12? Uh, iron spikes? Uh, yep. Hold the door shut. Hold the door. 15 uh, silver. It would tell. No. Uh, yeah, this one says one gold piece, but whatever you I th- is fine. Yeah. So at least 10, double it, 20 gold, 20 silver. These, uh, these come in a pack. In OSE, it's mm-hmm. steaks oh, and a mallet, and uh, it's three okay. gold, it's three gold pieces, uh, which makes it okay. uh, uh, that would make it sixty. Um, oh, uh, the uh, spikes are spikes are different, so they're still the iron spikes, but yep. the, uh, oh, the steak spikes, and the mallets sorry. for vampire. Okay, yeah, iron spikes. Okay, so it's a yeah. I'm just piece. holding the door shut. That's all I'm doing. Hold the door. Which uh, iron? Okay, so that would be uh, eighteen silver pieces. Yeah. What else? Um, backpack. And it's kind of personal stuff, but four, four gold pieces turns into 40 uh, silver. It's uh, five gold pieces, which would make it okay. Uh, which would make it 10, which is 100 silver pieces, minus uh, 20 is 80 silver pieces. Okay. Oh, yeah, I get the conversion rate wrong in my head. 
is one gold worth 10? In this book, it does show it. That's same as the old basic. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Got it. Uh, so the cost that you're noticing that he's then off. double it. It's doubled, then, and then uh, you yeah. have a discount, a small discount, thanks to. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, thanks to Warden. We're who apparently so far. Fisherman. So long as I haven't missed anything, so far we're at 2,085 silver pieces spent. Okay. I might still, it says whetstone, one gold piece, but however you want to work that, or you really care, I'm getting a whetstone. So. Uh, okay, a whetstone. Yep. I do not see that on here as a... Yeah, it's on It's on oh, this yeah. version right here. I'll just write it, it's one gold piece right there, it says so it's double two and then discount no 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 he's, he's just got this stuff uh it's from the osc bit oh. so th this is the okay. basic supply list for, for okay. the game is is what's in osc classic sorry, fantasy I'm... Um, oh, i'm sorry i'm going up this one sorry yeah that's all right yeah the the inventories in the different retro clones are a little bit different um mm -hmm. they're uh for example in labyrinth lord which is probably one of the OG BX retro clones, they go as specific as like, do you have clothes and do you wear a leather belt versus a, uh, you know, how many pouches do you have, you know, which is fun. Sure. And, I, and I do that in that game and uh, Dave's game. And I like doing it, you know, and it can come into play, but this one's very simple and it's just the, the OSC one. Okay. Um, I won't go into why right now. But okay. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, um, so after you, uh, uh, what do you just like bring all the bags of silver coins, like uh, two thousand and almost one hundred silver coins, and put them in bags and and uh, take the pile of stuff uh, and start putting it on your backpacks and gear. I mean, yeah, I think so. Yeah, just kind of. Yep, yeah, there's room over here. Okay, yeah, no, this will fit over here. And then as he's like calculating things. I'm just helping him count coins and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the process of counting coins, sometimes he'll take bunches of it. He'll run off with it so off in the back or run back and he'll keep uh, counting coins. He's sweating profusely as he looks at these coins and everything. And uh, as you get close to done, uh, close to done, most of the coins have actually been taken to the back, but there's like maybe a bag left. This all takes a good, Two hours. We're talking like two thousand, more than two thousand silver coins being coined and all uh, counted, and all kinds of equipment. And so, by the time he, he's done, and you have all your equipment, you're ready to go. It's all on you and on your backpacks and everything, right? And uh, he's counted all the, the silver silver pennies, and he's got two bags left of it. Uh, he's bowing profusely to Warden. He's like, "Oh, thank you, kind sir. Thank you so much." He ba just bowing multiple times. And then as you're leaving the door, he's leaving with you and he shakily locks it up and he puts the bags of coins in his pockets and his tunic. And he's like, oh, I think we're closed today. I think we're closed today. And then he runs off with all this money, more money than he's had in years. Oh, man. Good for him. Good for him. So he's we started with 3,000. Yeah. As he runs off, I say, hey, don't thank me. Thank him. And I point towards Edward. <laughs> Oh. I was going to turn around and, like, give us a bigger price or be angry or something. I don't know. Oh, he's not angry. He's he's just, like, uh, waddling off with uh, two giant bags of silver pennies, not including what he's actually already put up. His, laugh crying? Yeah, laugh <laughs> crying as he goes, yeah. So we started with 3,000 silver, was it? Yeah. All right. All right, we have 915 left after that. Well, good. <laughs> it was, uh... <laughs> All right, well, so let's let's... headphones. Yeah. Let's uh be right back. All right. Let's head out then. All right. <laughs> Very uh, thorough shopping experience. Um, as you depart the gates with your backpacks and gear and everything, 
you, you're not going to round up your Hobbit friends? Going to leave them? Going to leave them in town this time? Oh no no no! They're, oh, they got to no, come. No. Yeah, they got to come. Yeah. Oh, you go and you find uh, Knob and and Squints and those guys. Yeah. Okay. Um, so all of this takes some time. Uh, it takes uh, time to uh, put all this stuff in the bank and get all that set aside. It takes time to um, uh, to uh, um, buy all this stuff and transfer this huge amount of money, or at least what is in local tender. And then you go and you find Knob at uh, the Matham house, and you find Ned and Squints in the farm. So it's been several hours into the day. So it's currently... Uh, late morning, early afternoon when you begin. And uh, Knob, Ned, and Squints get their own equipment together. Uh, and uh, of course they follow you. Of course. And where do you go? Whoops. All right, so... We're heading west, you can't, right? um, you can't just cross the river, right? We have to go up to... Go up to that log. Do we have to go up to the log to do that, or can we ford it somewhere else? I should also note that it's a, a very hot, humid day. Uh, you can, it's one of those days, uh, despite it being um, uh, the fall, uh, there's enough heat uh, that uh, it's humid, and you can hear uh, 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 well, anyways, it's, it's a hot, super hot, wavy hot day. Um, and, uh, so the, the current of the river has calmed down in the past week and a half that you've been here, but it is still a river, uh, and you would be trying to ford a river with your equipment. Okay. So up to the log. Okay. Um, go through the forest. Uh, well, I meant to go along the river. Along the river. Okay. Okay. All right, uh, along the river. Okay. All right. Um, realize I can't hear the music and I don't know how to fix it. Can anybody else hear it? Yeah. I, I think it. if you reload it, it should fix it, usually. Um, I always have to scroll over and then immediately keep the pump. I don't know why. Let's see here. Roll a... Uh, D6, uh, Warden. Um, this is a, whenever I have you roll a D6, uh, and it's not for something that you're, um, uh, doing a skill test, it's always, basically, it's to know if you're surprised. That's always why you're rolling a D6. Uh, what did you get on your D6? Got a six. Six. Okay. Um, about a um, hundred and twenty yards off ahead of you. So you actually make it about. You're on this side of the river. You're 120 yards away. You can see that huge tree that's fallen across the the river over top of it. Um, because you're trying to make it. You said you're making it to the tree. That's the goal. So you, is that is that right? Uh, Edward? Yeah, to, to cross. Yeah, to cross the river. So so you start making it toward that tree, and you can see it uh, as you pass through the woods, carrying all your stuff. Uh, Nob is chatting about everything that's been happening lately, hearing all your concerns about the Shire, apologizing unnecessarily for, all, for the sake of all hobbit kind, um, and you're about 150 yards out from, uh, from that fallen tree, and you can see um, uh, something huge sitting in the middle of it. 
Um, it's some large humanoid figure, probably four or five times the size of a person, um, covered in what looks like just moss and goop and stuff. It looks just like the thing that you scared up when you uh, lost your alligator, right? Uh, about about a, a, a mile or so closer along the riverfront. Oh. It's a... Uh, it... Um, it sees you and starts making uh and but you're about 120 yards off and you see it and uh it starts making all sorts of moaning guttural sounds what do you do i think last time it wasn't mean so i just wave kind of like sheepish not sure what to do here wave I will make no sudden movements and wait to see how it responds to that. I'd like to try to hide my presence so that if we get closer, he doesn't know of my existence. Okay. Um, so I'll, hide. I'll do that on my end. So I'll roll for you to do that. Um, yeah, you... I have three and six still on stealth. I don't know if that means anything. Yeah. Okay. So you try to hide in the like in the wilderness nearby. Okay. And um, he sees Bashaw and Edward like waving, and he and you, and he makes more loud guttural sounds. Hops up from the tree and starts loping towards you. Um, I don't know if you've seen Ratbite, but Ratbite would see Warren trying to hide. And like that's a good idea. You're gonna try to hide too, aggressively, right? or. Yeah, Rabbi will try and hide if he can find the spot. So. Does he look angry? I mean, I, I, I'm not going to. I don't think it's possible for a human to know whether this thing is angry or not, uh, because it is definitely not human. But I will say it looks very enthusiastic. All right, I'm going to unsling my bow and uh, dart back into the woods. You're also going to try to hide. Ah. Uh, I guess I'm at least find find cover and, and you know, line up a yeah. shot. So I'm um, so only twenty percent hide on my hide and shadows. Is so, level three thief. So am I am I wrong in thinking that we didn't like it, this thing wasn't mean last time, right? Didn't we scare it and it scared us and we all kind of ran in different well, directions? That was when we had a large alligator on our side. There was that was when we had a large alligator. I'm also going to go into the woods. <laughs> okay, so everybody's going to try to hide. Okay. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know. If I'm not really trying to hide necessarily. I'm just, yeah, evasion. There you go. I've got a, a three and six chance. Well, I have no idea what, what chance I have. Okay, so you all dart into the woods and hunker down. And uh, this thing, remember, like I said, it's about 120 yards off. So you like, you know, run away from it. And you're already a ways away. You run into the woods and hunker down. Uh, you can't even, you have no idea where Rat Bite is. You, and uh, like, you, you can't see him. <laughs> and then like, uh, um, you're waiting there and you can you can hear this oh, 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 oh. As the, and this huge hulking thing like uh, knocking down smaller branches and trees as it gets closer to you and stops and then just like oh, 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 oh. it makes more like noises and waits and then is just like oh, oh, and then runs off again back towards the branch and on the other side of the river <laughs> Well, well, what, can, can we get around him while he's over here? Because 120 yards, can we get around him? You know, once he gets up to where the tree line is, uh, you can try. However, the devil's bargain on that will be that there's a chance you'll break your cover. Well, yeah, I, I'd like to depart the tree line. Well, anyway. Let's give it a shot. Alternately, you can wait, but it takes time. Uh, so he is, it, like I said, it, he's going back the way he came and he's crossing the branch. But by the time he gets there and gets out of sight, it will take time. That's the downside. I think what's a better idea is when he, if he comes and approaches us, and then like as he's getting ready to leave, we all just like dart to the north and try to like cut him off at the... I, I think that's what he's saying. I think that's what Edward's yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah taking a I break think so, I think we, go we can him. beat him across. 
Um, I will yeah. leave that to the two rangers to lead the, to guide the way. So um, you can do both a uh, your hide check with your d6 and a dexterity check, and you have to both pass for this not to fail. Uh, but you only have to pass one of those two. Yes. Right. Oh, wait. Who's is who's? Need it. Mine says test, but I don't know. Oh. Uh, no, should be right. Okay. One of them succeeded. All right. Uh, a 19. So that fails. And a... Oh, no, I failed too. You have a minus one to dexterity? Um, I got a, a 14 dex. Oh, uh, so that would be a, a plus one, which means a minus Oops. one. You know, in this case. Oh, I used the wrong one. I meant to use a d20. Or, sorry, I used the wrong macro. Yeah. <laughs> So do we not know? We don't know who rolled the three versus the five because everybody's rolling based on the group token, and it says test. Um, so I'll just we'll just say that you know, so long as you can pass. We both have the same odds. We both have the yeah. three and yeah. six, so they're the same. Well, uh, and I unless... mean, we both need to pass, but they're both three out of six. So yeah, but also you can roll a d twenty. Okay, but it's that's okay. I'll just assume the the best well, case scenario. So we have a three and a five, so both are d6s, and then we have a 19 and a 16. Right, so if... Both are d20s, so... Yeah, uh, well, okay, so anyways, uh, three, five, so that fails. Uh, we, we, have we have four, we, we have three, three fails and one pass. Ah, uh -huh, yes, okay. Yeah. But, but wait, before, so you, you, sorry, Steve, you have a, what, a 14 decks? Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. I just rolled the wrong macro, so there's no plus one. But gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yes. Uh, in that case, uh, the troll sees you as you start to dart. You think you're clear, uh, but it sees you again, starts loping back towards you. It would be impossible to try to hide from it at this point. Run like the wind. You're gonna try to flee. Yeah, I think we have to. All right. Well, we don't have to, but. Warden in front of really, like running like a rabbit. He's <laughs> like scared to death. Yeah. It's flee or fight or see no. if we can parlay, and I don't know that that's those are last two options are very good. He let slip what the creature was where I'm I we're, you know, we could. We could take him, but no. <laughs> but does, does we anyone... still have to get some other stuff done. Does anyone have a less than 120 foot movement speed in combat? Or I'm sorry, a 40 foot movement speed in combat. So does anybody wearing armor? Like uh, you got heavy armor? What type of armor do you have? You're muted. Uh, I'm you sorry, I've got you muted here. Is that, really? Where, where, okay. Yeah, sorry, go ahead. It's, it's chain mail. Chain mail. Yeah. Okay, so heavy armor. So Yeah, AC 14 so with shield, yeah. Without treasure, twenty foot movement speed. Um, the troll. He's a dwarf. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. that? I can't remember. That maybe that doesn't. That was a anything. sixty. Maybe I'm, maybe uh, I'm thinking something different. The troll catches up. Is there a feature for dwarves that says that um, they're not affected by the use of heavy armor? I don't. Let's see. No, um, it's no. There's nothing no, new. What am I? What am I thinking of then? Anyway, sorry, my bad. Okay. It's gonna bug me. I'm thinking of talking. Must be. You're good at short <laughs> sprinting over short distances. <laughs> sprinting. Right. Well, no, that's not. That's not, that's not a talking line. Yeah, but that's, say, <laughs> that's somebody else. He does yeah. say that dwarves make light of burdens. Nice. And specifically says uh, uh, Gimli is the only one still wearing like heavy armor, like throughout the whole journey, pretty much. Um. This thing uh, lopes towards you, approaching. What do you do? 
Well, you uh, you. Um, the group. What does the group do? Um, you are uh, unable to outrun it. Um, so we all we, should, we all started booking it. So we're all kind of like what on our running towards the 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 bridge essentially when the dwarf is falling behind and is coming for us. Yeah. Is that basically the situation? That is basically the situation. And we right. recognize now we're not going to yeah. get away. How far are we from the bridge? Uh, you oh. uh, about um. By the time you start circling around this thing and it notices you, probably about a hundred yards. Can't make it very far. <laughs> Can't make it very far before it found us and caught us. I guess I'm just gonna knock an arrow. Everybody else, yeah, I imagine. Climb a tree and knock an arrow. Yeah. <laughs> ah, okay. That's our, that's our one two punch. Yeah. All right. Are there any. I find a minus separate from trees too. Separate trees. No. Shooting from it's a tree. Fun. We need. Uh, is that possible for everybody? This thing could knock trees down. That would be bad if you were in it. Oh yeah, good point. I mean, also we were. I thought we were making a break from the tree line. Right. Did we get past it, the tree line? Does it appear that this it. thing's made of stone, or that is? Does it look like it's made out of stone or something? No, it looks like a it's like a, a large, five times the size swamp thing, with like uh, moss okay. and stuff hanging off of it, and a big gorilloid appearance. Swamp thing. And it's about five the, times the size of, of, of a person. Um, okay. I'm just going to use this token because I don't have one. And um, let's see. So you're going to try to climb a tree. Uh, it's running towards you. You you have a probably a couple of rounds to act before it gets to you. Don't forget the hobbits. Oh yeah. Oh yes, yeah. Oh hobbits. yeah. They are the also PCs. not going to be so fast. The huge hobbits. <laughs> fast and large person to turn them into medium creatures. Running, I just like yell over my shoulder. I think Vivian wanted to see you. Go, the witch asked about you. Go, go, go look for her. <laughs> Maybe if we run towards her. Hey, host. While it's running towards me, I have an idea for my first turn. You said we have turns to act, right? Uh, yeah. Um, so the whole group plan sounds like it's to hunker down and fight. Uh, two of you have mentioned climbing a tree. Uh, the hobbits look like they're ready to climb the tree as well. Uh, yeah, what is uh, what are you thinking? I want to kind of get close, like in the back of the group, like closest to it, I guess, out of all this, <laughs> and use my mirror to reflect sunlight into its eyes and try to temporarily blind it slash discombobulate it so we have more time to think of something else. Okay, uh, I'll make a... I I'll do a... Um, it, because it's not a spell and because there are spells that do that, I'm going to give it a save versus magic, but I'm going to give you a penalty. Okay. If it looks like that works, I'm going to try and take advantage of him being distracted and Find another place to hide. <laughs> but... Yeah. Um, what is the viability of this tree <clears throat> scenario? If we find big ones, we should be okay. Also, I'm, I'm asking Ross. What's uh... the uh, the magic or the uh, the mirror does not work. That was a great idea. Sorry, what were you saying? I uh, saying, what, what, is there actually a big enough tree that close by? You, to, in order to try to climb the tree? Yeah. Yeah, so you could climb a tree. However, I do want to note this thing uh, is like five times the size of a, like a typical, I don't know, five. That's probably crazy. Two and two and a half times the size of a regular man. Like, he's just big. What is that? Like 10, 
feet tall, you know, 12 feet tall kind of thing. And then hunched over, right? Pickup truck or semi-truck or combine thing? Pickup truck, yeah. Okay, there we go. (laughs) Yeah, but not as wide. Yeah, I'm not trying to... I I said like five times the size. That's crazy. It's like a big... It's twice as big as a person. It's a big. Um, But... uh, It's big like an ogre. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so... But yes, you could climb the tree if you wanted to. Is everybody going to try to climb up into the tree then? Is that the plan? I'm, I'm, I'm not. I decided against it. Okay. I might, I might try to hide behind a tree trunk. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing yet. I don't. Yeah. I, I definitely don't want it to be the same tree. I know this image, you have like a single tree here, but I don't know if there's multiple trees around. Or there are totally multiple trees around, for sure. Okay. I'm going to designate a... I'm looking for like a big tree that he won't be able to knock D5. down. Uh, He's going to designate some type of Eldritch uh, deity. D- Dave, uh, you are the group caller for this session. Uh, so, what is the plan for the group? That is the most important thing. What is the plan for the group? Right. So, who's climbing the tree right now? Who's climbing the tree? Raise your hand right now. Who's climbing the tree? Tree. Steve? Yep. Just one. That's it. I am. I'm. I am not going to climb a tree. Yeah, I'm not going. I. I no, dwarf's not going to climb a tree. No, no, not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, I'll stay back <laughs> right. to back or side to side with you. Uh, so. Do that... you need my grappling hook? Do you need my grappling hook? Oh, it's okay. No. I'm good at climbing. Okay, you're the only one. The rest of us are going to be um. Stay in the far side of the tree, but the tree be- between the tree between uh between. Us and it. Yeah. Is you're gonna do what with that tree? We're gonna stay on the opposite side of the tree from stay, it. Yeah. It's, okay. Stay behind the tree. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so you do that, um, and then you've got your weapons and everything. Like you said, uh, it gets within, um, I'll say, half movement distance, right? So, you know, or one and a half for. <clears throat> for uh yeah, Tharnlin. Lose a volley. and uh uh Tharnlin, you can roll a d6 for initiative i'm assuming the way he's casting spells so or retreating all right roll it one more time i'm sorry i'll, I'll do that out in the open i don't know why i'm doing that i don't have to hide this roll that bumped do it again do it again did you see that i'm not ma- did you see how it bumped it yeah. Which is neat. Okay, dang. Do it again. Oh my gosh. Simultaneous. <laughs> I just have spoken. All right. Wow. All right. You all have uh, won the initiative. Uh, if you're doing a missile attack, you can uh, you can roll to hit and for damage. All right. It, if it's you're obviously going to attack, so. If you're moving, you can move now. Do we have a it? Mm. Uh, you have to hit a armor class thirteen ascending. How far okay. away it. is it? Fifteen feet. Oh, only fifteen feet. Yeah, you should get Might a plus one to it with your bow. All right, one, two, three. All right, looks like yeah. uh, two. I missed. <laughs> I totally missed. Right, it says you hit Edward. Well, that was uh, no. Hmm. Okay. I'm rolling a physical die here on my desk. Oh, okay. And I and I missed. When I roll, it says I'm him. Oh, uh, I don't know why that is. It has you logged in as uh, Chris in that case. Okay. Anyways, uh, uh, Steve is there. I see Steve's name yeah. there. What what damage? Yeah, I don't know why it keeps doing what that. What damage did you get, uh, Steve? Four. Four damage. Okay. Let me see. All right, well, if it's, in, if it's that close, I'm still trying to figure out how to roll with this sheet instead of doing it. But I'm going to chunk an axe at it, maybe. Okay. Nope. All right. I don't know if I roll. Uh, I will roll for the hobbits who also attempt to attack it. Uh, they all miss. Uh-huh. Uh, once it starts uh, getting pelted with arrows and stones... 
uh, it it uh, like things start flying past it, and it just like all of a sudden this wild eye gets lit in its face, and it just roars like, Rrr! and it gets really just insane angry. Charges toward the nearest person to Thornland and uh, attacks. As two holy smokes, okay. Uh, does a 15 plus just a 15 does a 15 hit no it's plus 6 15 plus 6 21 to hit 21 to right, so you hit w hit that hits okay and then damage uh, six points cool. of damage as this, this big mitt just comes down and claws you and probably smashes the dwarf down into the ground. Okay, uh, roll for initiative again. Tharnlin, roll a d6. All right, you're all able to act first. So what are the chances of throwing a flat? I, mean, I don't want to waste our oil, but... I got oil. I do too. I've got a flask of oil. If I get hit it with a flask of oil, would there be a chance of us getting that oil then to ignite somehow? You can absolutely. Somebody else got to light a torch. You can yeah. use oil as a missile weapon. That is absolutely something okay. you can do. Because I'm kind of thinking it might be worth it. But who's got a lit fire? Who's got a fire that's already on? To... Yeah, that's the problem. Is... That's fine. That's you the can, problem. You can light a torch and then light the. No big deal. Yeah. No big deal. Can totally do that. Um, optional rules. Other combat issues. Two thirty-six for splash damage. Yeah, I'm gonna just draw my sword and. Like I, I, I threw an axe and missed, so I'm, I'm, I don't have any. I, I was too skip, too cheap to and carrying stuff to buy a, a bow, so I'm like. Yeah, I'm in melee range. I have to. I have to fight with the axe now, with the battle yeah. axe. Okay. So, so the, if I so, but if I throw a flask of oil, am I going to hit Tharnwin? With... So top top of the round. First thing is this: What is the group's plan to fight? Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Every, okay. every shot. We're we're fighting. We're not we're not going back. Right. We're fighting. We're fighting. Okay. Correct. Uh, yeah. Any plans, ideas, or stunts, tricks, something you want to try? You see around I wanna... you. It sounds like the stunt is to throw the oil. Okay, uh, so I, I will say one downside to to that is there is a chance that when you attack with a splash weapon, the splash effect in missing the target could splash in a random direction. That's the only downside, using a That's D12 for the downside. clock position. Yeah. You're gonna ruin my new clothes. But that I'll just say that's the splash effect from it, not the. Uh, and actually. Of course, it's, but I was more worried. Uh, there's that, and then there's just throwing a melee or in a Actually, uh, range uh, uh, so melee, I, right? I, I'm interpreting this to say that that's just if you're specifically trying to get it on a surface. So if you use it as a missile weapon, you just miss. And uh, it says that uh, if you're using a oil flask burning D6, it does a D8 damage, actually. Splash weapon, but you have to declare that that's what you're using it for what I'm reading. All right. Uh, okay. So in that case, uh, anyone retreating or casting spells? Nope. Uh, if I'm you're saying that I'm kind of flanking the group, kind of separating myself from the others. Okay. But I, I already rolled a 17 to hit my shot. Um, okay. I'll get to the missile attacks in a second. Okay. So no missiles or anything. No, no other stunts. Uh, if you're moving. Well, we're throwing. The flask of oil. Is that a missile? That's a missile. Yeah. Right. Um, so well, I think the first thing is, if you are uh, moving, move your token now. I did. Okay. Uh, and then missile attacks. If you're doing a missile attack, roll to hit and roll for damage. Uh, 17 to hit and 16. Nice. Okay. Oh, uh... God dang it. Uh, that's not going to hit. 
roll over back to my dice heat me. All right. I'm going to try. I'm also going to try with a flask of oil here. All right. Yeah. Everybody, if you're doing a missile attack, roll to hit and roll for damage. Everybody. Everybody that's doing it. I missed. I got a 19. 19 hits. Yeah. All right. You say D8. Yep. That's a D8. Three damage. All right. But it is fire. I don't know if that matters to this troll. Uh, it is fire. And so you all, uh, the, the other thing that hit, uh, was that Warden? Did you throw that? Uh, you all threw flasks of oil and these things shatter. Uh, across, glass shatters and you can hear it and it explodes in a flame across it and it actually was like, is, and it rears up from its haunches, from its kind of gorilloid, hunched over figure and it rears up like a big bear over you as this flame uh, ignites over top of it. Uh, and, uh, all right, uh, if anybody is, ooh, Tharnland's in range. Uh, Tharnland, have you not done a missile attack? You can do a melee attack if you haven't done a missile attack. Um, um, yeah, because he did melee on me, so I ha I'm in melee range, so here we go. Ah, crap. Oh, good lord. Oh, yeah, forget oh, it. Okay. Yeah. Two attacks against Tharnland, who's right here. 12 plus 6 doesn't... Three attacks? Huh? Yeah. He's got three dice. You got yeah. three attacks? No, three no. Attacks? No, no, I don't know who... It, it says that you rolled. I don't know why. Really? But, okay, yeah. right. But anyways, uh, does a uh, 18 hit? Or does yes, it... yes, because... Yeah, it, it does. Okay, yeah. Yep. Plus 6. It does. AC's 14. Okay, he only hits once... Whoops, that's the wrong die. Thankfully. Thank God. Yeah, thank God. Uh, for four points right. of damage. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm falling down. Boom, right there. Okay. Uh, so, are we playing the house rules of bandaging wounds and everything? Are you, uh, oh, you were max HP at level two, right? Yeah, oh, no, I thought it was level one still right there. It was level two, no, you're no, right. Everybody starts oh. at level two with max HP. So that, that would I'm be good. I'm good. Whatever I'm good. a dwarf's good. HP is times two max. Max. I'm good. Die, yeah. Yep. I so say, and I, I you're close. and the uh, <laughs> constitution bonus. Yeah. So it was 18 originally total minus the individual uh, six, right? Minus six. Minus what was the last one? Uh, Four. Yeah, I don't know. You've taken ten overall. Okay, got it. I'm good. I'm fine. All right. Um, it's a flush wound. Top of the round, what is the plan? Any stunts, ideas, tricks? What's the plan? Does it look like we can get away now? Uh, Does it look like the fire has slowed it down enough to where we might be able to get out of here? I think, I think so, except I think the problem with that is Tharnland. I think that Tharnland is locked in mortal combat with this thing in melee combat. Yeah, so, my plan is yeah, to... Yeah, and nobody's helping me out with mortal combat by now. <laughs> my 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 plan is to is to draw my sword and engage. Okay. Okay. If I think if that's the case, then I will join suit. I'll get my spear and my kite shield. And right. my too. Oh, by the way, with a with a spear, you can attack from the second rank. So you can attack, for example, behind Edward if you wanted. Was awesome. Nice. Yeah. I'll do that. Um, but but not through Tharland, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like the armpit hole, like right underneath the arm. I guess I will try and run around and see if I can find my hand <laughs> ducks because with at a distance because I don't think I have a chance of hiding to try and backstab. Uh, don't you get a backstab if if you're attacking from behind it while it's engaged with another player? Well, in yes, this, he does. Is that how it works? When attacking an unaware opponent from behind is how it's stated in the book. So. Yeah, I'm going to say that basically, as, so long as something is distracting it or gaining its attention and you're behind it, you're good. Okay. You don't well, have I'm still going to gonna circle around behind and see if I can find my hand axe <laughs> and come in because I did throw that at it. Yeah. You know, issue the the word backstab was the word that was used 30, 40 years ago in all the editions, advanced or basic or whatever. This one, you call it sneak attack. Yeah. Same rules, you know what I'm saying? Just let you know. Some of the, the word backstab wasn't politically yeah. correct. You yeah. uh, uh, you find your hand axe, um, and you're, uh, if, 
Anybody that's moving, you can move your token now. And if you're doing a missile attack, you can roll to hit. And Let's get those hobbits up here too while we're at it. Yeah, they've been doing missile attacks, but they they see that you're charging. They they start screaming and they bravely charge in as well to help Tharnland. Lord have mercy. Okay. Uh, did anyone hit hit for missile attacks? Yeah. Okay, and damage. Two points. Two points. Um, you see it like uh, the stuff like the this. This ichor that looks like the creature's blood start pouring out of wounds, and then like the wounds try to close, but the flesh is on fire and uh, it's screaming in pain and stuff as it's trying to knock Thornland down. Um, all right, in that case, then anyone doing a melee attack can roll to hit. With the plus one, I got a twenty. A twenty. Since I was. I'm sorry. A nat 20 hits. Since I was spinning my, my round looking for my hand axe, I, I wouldn't be able to pick it up and then get back in melee, would I? Uh, you can't do melee. Yeah, I figured my next round I, I could charge into melee with everybody. So. Um, what's the damage on that? I'm sorry. On this uh, D8 plus one or D6 plus one for Brandon's sword? Uh, that's a good question because it's a... Uh, Let's see, this is a, uh, there's a, a thing I have to check. Um, this is an interesting thing. Uh, I'm going to say it's a plus one. Yeah. All right. But D8, though? Yeah, D8. Uh, it's plus one to hit and damage, yeah. Okay, so eight damage. Okay, uh, describe how you uh, slay it with Brandon's sword. A simple... Wrath Strike, Zornhal, from the top. Slash it across the, uh, whatever, whatever would be a uh, sword arm pipe, the kidney or something like that? I don't know. The bowel. You do that and the, it leans over top of Tharnlin. Uh, this, like, goop, ichor just pouring out of its its open mouth and it, it falls like, get it off me! Get it off me! off your blade. <laughs> and then, uh, it slumps to the ground, yeah. And, uh, you all have slain your first troll. Now, I, attend, I knew it was a troll. Let's attend to poor Tharnlin here. Isha will never be friendly again. He learned his lesson. Get get this filthy beast off of me. <laughs> well, let's pray. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Let's pray that we uh, have no further uh, difficulty, uh, at least of that scale. Dharma, I, at, I have nothing... at least it wasn't. At least it wasn't two trolls arguing over with each other and over mutton. Yes. yes. <laughs> oh, William. <laughs> Um, all right, Tharnlin, uh, what's the next step? What do you do next? What's the plan for the group? I can see if it's got anything around it, you know, like if it's anything on the troll, anything nearby. You know, it came, where did it come from? It was that this side of the river? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Well, is there anything that is in the vicinity that had a possession? Uh, yeah, it was on the bridge. Yeah, it was on the bridge when you first saw it. Yeah. <clears throat> Look under the bridge. Yeah, Troll check swag. That, that bridge for any sort of hidden layers. Um, okay. All right. I also let me check something else real fast. Um, only it had been arguing with another troll, then it might be the kind of troll that would be stone in the sun, and then we'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, okay, nothing, okay. All right, uh, so you said you go back to the bridge, is that right? What, what did you say? I'm sorry. Inspect it. You, back you, to the bridge, you inspect the bridge underneath. Yeah. Okay. And the body, too, you check the, uh, yeah. the troll body. You check the troll body, and it's disgusting. Yep. 
As they it's, all are. It smells Maybe very last bad. One of them. Can I reclaim any of the arrows that I shot? Uh, roll a d10 for the percentage of uh, or of arrows that you get. D100, I mean, sorry. 15. 15. Or 61, whichever one it showed. 21. Yeah, 16%. Alright. You got a 21? What's 16% of 3? Uh, 1. Yay! It's one back. Alright. I was worried you were going to say 0, because <laughs> I'm pretty right. sure it's 0. You but find I'll take, part I'll of take. an arrow. <laughs> yeah. It's an especially small arrow. Okay, um, you go back to the log, um... It's now been half the day. It's now midday. Um, or into the day. So it's like high afternoon, uh, just short of evening. And um, uh, yeah, you see obviously where he loped through the, the forest. Uh, this kind of like meadow-like swampy area that's near the riverfront. And um, made his way into the forest after you all. Uh, you can see on the log where he was sitting, this huge log that stretches all the way across uh, the river, like a big bridge. And when you take a look at the bridge, do you go on the bridge? Darn one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, yes, absolutely. All right. Uh, you don't see... It just uh, looks like a huge... Wooden. It looks like a big tree that's been uh, mm. like falling apart, uh, falling over across the river. Uh, but it's fairly easy just to walk across. Uh, Shaw looks under it. Bridge. Yeah, and there's no like it's not hollow at any points, so there, and there's not like any holes or anything. I guess while looking over at nothing, on one end, tree and, over uh, the bridge. Nothing except something like bird holes. You know, nothing, nothing that's not natural. And uh, looking under the bridge, you can just see big branches and. Of, of the tree coming out into the water, uh, old deadfall. Uh, otherwise, there's nothing under the bridge or anything. No troll nests, okay. Doesn't look like there's troll nests. Hey. Let's move on. Okay, um, when you cross this, um, uh, this, this tree bridge, you can see a hillside couple miles over uh, across from you up the river uh, on the hillside are uh, ruined stuff just a, just a bunch of it could be like a bunch of old loose stone that's been gathered but even from here a couple mile mile and a half away or so you can see what looks like um, uh, things that have been blackened as if some bunch of detritus has been burned and then you can see where there's a forest stretching all around you in every direction on other and on every other side of you from here. Where do you go? The burns does it's not the same sort of burn as like the acid from the dragon, is it? Well, at least know in at least how you've seen it, uh, what the dragon you've seen do, you've seen it do this like swath through the forest where it's just burned down and knocked through a line of trees. Or burned a line through and sunk a bridge into the water, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, in that in that sense, no. But yeah. All right. So, two choices are what else? It's the area was burned, right? And the other one is forest. Let's go for the forest. Well, okay. I think we wasted much of the day. And perhaps wasted is the wrong word, but I think we make for the clearing in the hill. See what we can see there. Find a spot to camp and attack the forest in the morning. Uh, so find a, a defensible spot over here, you know, that, uh, yeah. yeah, so we'll, it will rest for the morning. Let's do that. Okay. It's already afternoon and I don't want to get trapped in the woods at night. Okay. Heading north. It's clear. With extra time, we can set up a sneakier camp, I guess. Well protected, well hidden. 
how do I pan on on the map right here? Like I don't want to. I want to zoom in, but I can't pan. Right, right click. Right click. Okay. Got it. Thanks. And actually, I might do that a little bit myself because I know it's laggier on on your all's end and on mine as well. But I have a different system up that can help kind of pan stuff. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, Refill my water. Okay, yeah, you refill your water as you go across, yeah. Um, let's see here. You see a couple things here, uh, but uh, let's see. Uh, Bashaw, roll a d6. Oh, here it comes. d6. I'm right up. Four. All right. All of you see as you get closer to the hillside that this blackened and charred, charred stuff that's on the side of the hill, uh, this collection of things, is clearly a destroyed caravan. There are ruined tents and corpses lying around a burnt wagon that's tipped over onto its side. Um, what long, what, what probably weeks, days ago probably held wisps of stinking smoke and fire has long since uh, met rain and uh, mildew and uh, and weather. It seems like it's been here for probably a week or more. And uh, <laughs> oh, um, there's a lot going on. Uh, also, uh, yeah. Warden roll a d6. Uh, you have to be surprised only on a one, right? As a ranger? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. You see the following things. Uh, you see that uh, as you're approaching from, uh, from the forest, uh, you can see that uh, on the hillside, kind of coming down off of it, a number of goblins, uh, only two, two goblins, are dragging a cart away with uh with some stuff in it uh it looks like uh maybe they were part of a larger group and then these were the ones left behind to drag the wagon you're not sure um uh you can also see that there are burned and long dead bodies uh still near the wagons uh the tents have been ripped apart by something looking like claws and knives um, long dried with blood and, and mud. And Bashaw, you can see over here uh, about 60 yards away at the tree line at the base of the hill is a dead deer. And you can see these large bat-like creatures swarmed over it fighting for the body of the deer trying to eat it and consume it. Oh, he uh, quietly points that out to the party. It's to the west, as he kind of points. Yeah, Bashal would also signal what he saw. He uses a mirror to glare people's um, eyes, get their attention, and just like he would probably mime it out, and, like. <laughs> The uh, the goblins don't notice you yet. Um, you all can see the goblins, but then <clears throat> uh, after you point out these bat-like creatures, you can see that um, uh, there are about four of them. Two of them are fought are f uh, fought off from this this quarry, and they turn and uh, sense you, and they just immediately start darting towards you. I roll the. It yeah. The, the remain unseen. Thank you. You're gonna try to hide. Uh, no, we've got uh, rangers. Uh, are kind of like. See, it's hard to sneak up on us, but 
It's a one in a three chance to be able to see us in the wilderness. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, kind of lumps once we get into the dungeon, but out in the wilderness, we're pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, Basha, you just fade into the nearby brush with your weapon ready. What's the plan for the group, uh, Tharn? So, so I see those the two rangers will be um, not kind of motion to the rest of them. We're going, the rest of us are going to go after the uh, the cart, the two goblins. Okay. So, stop the, them. You're going to try to stop the goblins and then stop slash ex execute them. Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, and then yeah, if we have to, and then with the bat like creatures that are coming, they're coming by the way towards you and um, currently Ben and Edward. Oh, there, so we can't do, yeah, hmm. go ahead. So, would we, if we attacked the goblins, would they be they'd then in theory be coming for all of us? But we don't know, like, hmm. To it's me, the two guy. goblins are separate from the bat-like creatures, they're right? They're separate. So, Around I mean, the if they're coming at him, are we better yeah. off, like, moving behind the goblins between... Could we, is there, Would it be possible to cut off in such a way that the goblins would be between us and the bat things? I'll give you a small okay. chance of trying to shoot one's leg or something. You just no, shoot it. Bow, but... Shoot the goblin. Oh yeah, if you just killed it, yeah. It, it, right. Just shoot the goblins. So we got the goblins it, don't see us. The bad things are coming for us, but they're I didn't know like in relation to each other where they are. How sure? Yeah, yeah. The goblins uh, are going north, right? And the bat like things are to the west. Is that right? Yeah, you got two bat like things, two goblins with a with a cart. Oh man, it's not letting me draw it. They're headed this way. Uh, these uh, bat-like things are headed towards you. Okay, so we're between the bats and the goblins. I wasn't sure if maybe <clears throat> it was close enough we could cut around and have them between us Well, you're us pretty and the close bats. to the goblins. You're pretty close yeah. to the goblins. About 60 yards away from the bat-like things, but they're fast. Um, I'll, I will say that if your goal is to make it to the goblins, you can do it. Okay, so I'm gonna say rangers on the bats, and then the bat like bat like creatures. Okay, I don't know if the wyverns, anyways, and the and the rest of us on the goblins. So yeah, yeah you know, I gonna, if I could chuck in and get a goblin real fast and throw it towards the <laughs> the bat things as a distraction is kind of what I'm thinking. Do you, you want to try to hide so you can get your backstab thing? That's kind of what I'm thinking. Okay, yeah. uh, let me see. I will roll that. Sounds like Darlin's got a plan to go after the goblins. I'm willing to. You have uh what is your I'm still dexterity? Listening. I'm moving. Dexterity is a 13. Okay. And you're trying to shoot the goblins? Well, I don't even have a bow, so I don't know if I'd be able to shoot. I've got stuff to throw, but I'd have to be within like 10 to 15 feet, I think, before I could really be in range. Yeah, you gotta get a bow as a thief. I know, I keep I meant to. Yeah. At least get a sling yeah, and something I like that. Was, yeah, no, I you was, wouldn't uh, be able to shoot then. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, rangers deal, are, are trying to hide, and then everybody else is running toward the goblins. Okay. Here we I'm go. gonna Just hand. Go. I'm gonna hand you my bow, Ben, before you run off. Okay. Take it. Take it for now. Here's the bow. Here's there's there's 19 arrows left. Let me know how many you spend. Okay. Um. So, Ben, you're going to try to shoot the goblins? Yeah. Okay. And is everybody else charging at the goblins just to try to kill them? Or what is that? Is the goal to try to, like... Yeah, there's two of us, yes. Yeah, yeah we got to stop that cart no matter what else happens. Okay. All right. Uh, you make it to the goblins. They're unaware, and they're surprised. And if you're attacking the goblins, everybody can roll to hit, whether missile or melee. Roll to hit and yeah. damage. Oh. Looking at the um, the thing for the rangers, I got a bit of a Mandela effect thing going on. So apparently, it's just if I'm trying to sneak up on somebody in the wilderness, it's oh. a three and six chance. So the which in, thirteen. Uh, I doesn't say 
melee or range, so I get backstab if I shoot them from behind without them knowing? Well, <coughs> because uh, your allies are in melee, I'll say that you get your backstab. Yeah, just uh, by way, attacking an unaware opponent from behind, so if I got the five mm-hmm. shot before they notice this. That's true, too. <laughs> yeah, that's true, too. Uh, but it doesn't work for missile attacks, only I mean, for melee. It doesn't say that it? in the OSC yeah. write-up. It just says when attacking an unaware um, opponent from behind. So you're, uh, it's to hit armor, ascending armor class 10. Uh, did anybody hit it? I hit and did Oh, seven. I hit it. I hit it. Yeah, every 10. Yeah, I okay. did. Seven okay. damage. Seven. Here. 19. Okay. And Ooh. damage. You and a melee. All right. You, five. You, you run up and slay the goblins easily. Uh, the the bat-like things are steering toward um, uh, toward your allies that were attacking the goblins. What do you do? Fire. Fire. You're going to try to shoot the bat-like things? Yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, cool. In that case... Uh, uh, Warden, roll a d6 for initiative. All right, you're all able to act first. You can roll to hit and for damage. All right, roll to 13. Unless we're really close within 50 feet or within 70 feet, in which case it's a 14. Um, All right, the hits and roll for damage. Ah, drats. Okay. Let's see, uh, arrow out cheese. We got a three. Okay. Um, you strike one. It slows down in flight, but still starts, keeps barreling toward uh, mm. your allies. Uh, it is their turn. Um, <clears throat> they are still going to try to go for them. Uh, they're going to make it to them because they're very fast, and they're going to try to attack your allies. It's going to be Edward and um, uh, Ben. Oh, wait, Ben, you're hiding, right? Well, I did try and take a shot, so I don't guess I'd be hiding. Well, I mean, but you're not. Okay. Well, anyways, it, that one missed, but Edward, uh, does a uh, does a 14... Oh, interesting. There's a 16 hit. 16 hits, yes. Okay. Um, This bat-like creature attaches onto you, and you feel a needle-like thing jab into your your shoulder, uh, and it just grabs onto you, and it's stuck on you. And you can feel your your life force being drained from you. uh, Ah! um, As you take three points of damage. Um, And... uh, Tharnland, you can roll a d6 for initiative. These bat-like okay. creatures are now upon you all. Three. Three. Uh, I got a three. Roll three. Again. Roll. My ladder one. Three. Yours is one. Oh, okay. All right. Um, all right. What do you all do? What's the plan for the group? Spill We're still engaged on the bats right there, right? Okay. Kill them. Very well. Yep. All right. Yep. Um, or I, a melee. If it's combat, then it all comes down to if whatever you're doing, if you're shooting with a bow or attacking them, roll to hit and for damage. We can still melee them, right? Yep. Or no? Yep. Okay, yeah, all right, here we go. go. You can like yes. try to I get roll. it off of that and gonna... try to stab it when uh, it's on him and stuff. What is it's... your armor class again? Uh, uh, it's... I, I, I'm an eight. I rolled it. I basically have an eight effective. Why is it? Uh, it's uh, to hit an armor cl- ascending armor class twelve. Oh my gosh! Okay, yeah, got it. I missed. Yeah, yeah I don't, I missed. It doesn't look like anybody has hit. Uh, missed. We suck. So four people yeah, have rolled. That's, that's what a rough about round. you, Edward? Oh, I missed. I forgot the hobbits, and I apologize. So they're all going to attack. Oh, twice. that's right. Awesome. Because that's not fair. You all brought them out here. Hey, so hobbits. There we go. Hobbits. 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 Okay, you guys. Or, go. or. Is they're slow, and they're just like, and but then they're all just like, ah, and they scream in, they run in to, to attack. Uh, let's see. Four of them Out hit. of nowhere. And then the hobbits. Out of nowhere, it's a tiny little Ides of March. 
Uh, this uh, six, six, one. knob jumps on top of you, Edward, knocks you down, and pulls this thing, <laughs> slides it out of your shoulder, and you hear a sliding noise and blood <clears throat> and pressures let go as this thing comes out of you. Uh, and you feel this, like, pumping of blood uh, coming out of your shoulder. Um, oh. And knob stabs it and kills it, and the other two knock down the other one uh, and kill it. It's like uh, RoboCop. <laughs> Thank you for not smoking. <laughs> all right. Um, what do you all do? Let's check that cart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what's in the cart? And obviously the bats have nothing, so. Let's see. You mean get us, get us some venison to eat for dinner? Yeah, a fresh deer kill. Well, wait, we don't know how fresh it is. Yeah, that, that, with the bass, fresh. yeah, I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. it, so, be fresh. several I things. Like... Let me start with the bad news. There's nothing of value here. I mean, I would have been surprised. It's been a week, or you said, or so. Many, a few days since this thing has been hit, so... I kick a dead guy one anyway. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> now you say dead bodies. Are, what kind of bodies? Dwarf. Um, in in the in the wagon are all kinds of gross goblin things. Like, okay, yeah, I will say it. Um, parts of people. Uh, they're they're left over like clothes, uh, trash. Uh, it's just like. Things that would be useless to you, but a goblin might think is useless. Um, the bodies here, you can see parts of their bodies are missing. Fingers and hands and heads and stuff. The armor has been ruined and battered uh, for what pieces of armor remain. Um, here's what you're able to tell about the caravan. It's obvious that it was a dwarven caravan. Uh, that it was destroyed a week or more ago that it once carried a large number of trade goods, and those have since all been taken off. Uh, I will also note that something obvious to you is that the <coughs> goblins were heading to the northeast. Wait, I can't ping. Um, they were heading... Mm, northeast. that away. ways Okay. Um, let me make sure. Wait. I have this wrong. I have this wrong. This is very important. Ah, I have it backwards. The goblins were heading southwest. this away. Southwest of the airline? Northwest. Yes. Yeah. They were heading that away. And there's a clearing off in that way. And you can look down on the other side of the hill. You can see it looks like that it's very well tracked. And that many different things have been dragged through there over the over you know, for a while now. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks like um, the wagon singed with corrosion. Uh, And they're, they were dwarves. And this is a dwarven caravan. Well, we know what happened right, so to I, some of them anyway. <laughs> Could be so I look among the... Uh, so I look among the bodies to see if they, I recognize anything having to do with uh, maybe what clan or what area those dwarves are from, perhaps. I'm not an archaeologist, but, you know, or anthropologist, but, you know, I am a dwarf. Um, uh, it, you don't see, like, you, you wouldn't be able to tell what clan they're from, but it's, it's obvious to you that these were the merchants that you were sent here to, to find, uh, you, that you were sent to figure out what happened to. These are the bulk of the dwarven merchants that last made it here that never returned to Karnbildor. Um, 
There's something else. Uh, I think that you could roll as a dwarf. Um, I was going to ask what the good news was. <laughs> that, that you're able to tell something. I don't know if we've made it through through the bad news yet. <laughs> uh, dwarves detect room detect construction tricks. Mm. You can ro so you can roll a d6. Right. And you can also do a wisdom check. Ooh, That's a one. Nice. That's a one. Well then, uh, um, I will. Uh, I will tell you. Average um, wisdom. That, although. Uh, let me see if I can kind of cheat here. Uh, although, you know, you're not able to tell specifics. It's obvious that these are the dwarves that you were looking for. But also, you look into the distance, into the hillside. Now, you're very well aware that these are the Black Spine Mountains. You can see at the foothills how... That there was clearly a dwarven mine. These weren't just merchants. Something out here caught their fancy, and they decided to set up shop. And if a dwarf is doing that, it means that there is a, a lot of gold. There is metal, yep. Yep. Okay. So, and that is in a direction still of, well, north. it's not northwest, though. Yeah, that or would be it? like northeast, north, uh, north, north, yeah. north, yeah, north or northeast. It is not in the same direction right. of the drag marks and stuff, and where the goblins mm. were headed. Going to the goblins, okay. I think we should look to see what's going on at, in that direction toward those mountains. There should be some ore up there. Well, it's Gold, very interesting. Silver. It's very interesting, but two things one we came out here to get the south which i think is back south from here or at least west uh but i think it was supposed to be southwest from the village you know what i think or that west, might... west of the village go ahead i think that might be where uh the dragon is living in the dwarven mines yeah well and that's why they got burned. Here, Gosh. But, uh... So the dwarves woke it up or something. Or 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 attracted it here. That's why I'm only average intelligence. <laughs> why do you guys keep doing that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, the other, this yeah. echoes the other game so much. I did not intend that. Oh no, no! It's it's, it's, uh, it's funny. Though. It's it's something the dwarves do. It's just something they do. They it's delve, just, yeah, they just... delve too greedily and too deep. <laughs> dwarves, and they awaken nameless fears. Stop it, dwarves! It's kind of what Stop they do. Stop delving too greedily. <laughs> yeah, you guys need to knock <laughs> that off. Pretty much, however, our other choice is. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no it was please, an what is the other choice? Our other choice is going the direction of where the goblins were going, which is probably exactly. the goblins' lair and local goblin chieftain. Well, okay. I don't like goblins too much. Now there seems to be uh, there seems to be a track that leads west from here. Is that my imagination? Um, <clears throat> there is a a clearing that goes off into the west, uh, but there's no tracks. Okay. But they said there were track marks. Uh, those That's go, northwest. Yeah, northwest, yeah. Yeah, but we need to go southwest. Yeah, we really should stay on point, on target, if we can. I mean, we've already we had a that. rough enough time. Yeah. It's I mean, also that, evening, but it's mid-evening. Like, you know, 5, 6 p.m. kind of thing. Yeah, I think it might be time to set up camp. Okay. We all need a rest anyway. Does everyone have food? And a water skin. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, Especially after the store. Night falls. Now we're depending on our ranger bros to uh, 
find us a nice spot. We're not just going to plunk down in the middle of the ruins. I think it's a little vulnerable. Nobody would expect it. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they might not expect it, but they might. <laughs> they therefore might come blundering onto the ruins just like we did. What is happening? There's a wolf nearby. Yeah. There we go. All right. All right. So we set up. We set up camp and set up the watches throughout the, uh, the hours of night. The uh, the night passes. The sun rises uh, in the morning. And um, whoever's on last watch, uh, the day begins uh, without being interrupted. You're able to camp through the night. It is now the ninth day in your time in this strange place. Well, let's let's head southwest then. Uh, were you saying something, Jake? Yeah, it's the tenth day. Oh, sorry, tenth day. Thank you. Okay, southwest, I see. Okay. Whoops, wrong button. Does so that camp count as a long rest for those of us that were injured? Oh, uh, I think you get D3 hit points back per day. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's D six, roll the dice one to two. It's D three. Yeah. It's only like just, one to two points. Yeah. Um, right here, combat damage. Uh, made all three back resting. Uh, no, that's not it. Yeah. Anyways, I think it's D three per day that you get back. Unless you do things like get uh, magical healing and all kinds of other stuff. Okay. Oh, anyways. Um, there's creatures that are protecting the trees we need to... Uh to tap wonder how we can uh bargain with them if they'll be uh talking to us if we tell them yeah so there's this dragon that's gonna destroy these trees the wolf pill it poses a wolf <laughs> um, Vivian says hi she sent us yeah. Just getting some sap for the witch. Bro. Yeah, that's interesting. What are you going to tell these things? Yeah. Um, as you you all travel for a couple of hours into the wilderness, at different times you stop. Maybe this is your first stop. Bashaw, you do your thing where you lean over your, your weapon, resting, standing. And uh, you look off next to you in the forest and you can see a fox. Um... Uh, Curiously sitting on a branch, just watching you. And its pelt is a shimmering perfect gold, as if it were made of gold ingots itself. All right, Bisha is kind of leaning. He's looking at the fox. He kind of cocks his head a bit. And he says, look, look at this. To everybody else? Quietly to the party, yeah. It, it leans its head when you do. Bashar leans its head the other way. It leans its head the other way. Huh. <laughs> Moves an arm out. It's a razor hand. Yeah. <laughs> Doing it does. Yeah. Raise a hand. Would you it's, a, it's a rather radiant fox. I don't know how much uh, it's gold. It's a shiny... Um, Darnland. Is it points? 
Is it, does it seem like it's, it's gesturing to go in a certain direction? Nope. It's just like looking at Bashaw. And then when you all start looking at it, it looks, it like kind of calmly looks at each of you. It okay. just sits I there peacefully high. looking at you. All right. <clears throat> well, is it like blocking our path? Nope. I'd like to take a knee and just kind of watch it. It. Uh, I'd it, like to offer. Uh, I'm okay. saying I'd like to offer something on the rations, which is like a meat, obviously, out of the, out of the ration, out of my ration. You give it a ration. Yeah, like well, a part of the ration, like whatever meat in there, you know. <laughs> it's not going to eat starch and vegetables, but yeah. You okay. Uh, if you offer it a ration. Um, and the parts of it that it will eat, obviously, but it'll take a ration. Offer up a ration to the fox. It uh, it but hops. It, it hops over to you, and like sits uh, and wags its tail and makes uh, quivering, chirping noises, and then sniffs and then starts eating the food happily. Okay. Like so far, I don't have rabies yet. Trusting fox. And then it. Uh, and- Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, see, I, and I and I, I do step away a little bit right there to, to not scare the animal, of course. And Jake, what did you say? I said I wanted to ask it its name. You you ask you say that out loud. Yeah, but I'll probably whisper it, or at least like say it under my voice, mm. so I don't scare the creature. It uh, <laughs> doesn't seem to speak uh, common. It just looks at you. And then uh, after some time, eventually, it just uh, runs off into the woods. What direction? Um, <clears throat> uh, back the way you came. Back uh, this ways. Oh. All right. Let's move on. But neat. I like that. Should we have asked it about the sap? Nah, it goes back. Okay. Oops. Well, it didn't seem very talkative. Yeah. Maybe you could have led us to it, but you know, best not to mess with curious forest animals in these woods, I'm assuming. One thing I know about a fox is it's a fox. We've answered the question of what the fox say. What would the fox Nothing. say? Nothing. <laughs> you have learned the truth. <laughs> it says Nothing. He just lied to us. Any sign of a grove or anything? Funny you should ask. <laughs> <laughs> a heavy, sickly, sweet aroma is settled in this part of the forests. And then suddenly you hear wafting in the air the sounds of mirth and music coming from an unknown source. My heart sinks. We found them. Well, good job. Looks towards Edward. Oh, your favorite thing. Yes. (laughs) Don't cut anyone's beard. Yeah, none of that. All right. Well... Let's uh, move to where the scent gets strongest. Okay. Um, Eventually you find yourself in an opening uh, where there is an ancient structure of some strange make. Tharnlin, when you look at it, you can tell that no man or elf or dwarf could make such a structure. At least not any that you would know of now. Um, I say pretty much the same to the party. (laughs) Well, and I'll offer you this rumor, since you're from Carnival Dar, that uh, you have heard of such structures. You've heard uh, that some strange elves hunt your kind for food and eat you, uh, and that they guard these structures. Uh, for some unknown reasons, perhaps in worship to forbidden and horrible gods. Um, But you see no elves around you. Uh, Instead, you see... uh, 
stop using analog dice. You instead see um, four humanoid creatures that um, are on, um, they have the tops of people, except with some aspects of beast, but the bottom half of a beast. And uh, they are dancing and drinking and uh, having a great time here in this glade. Are they playing like any musical instrument? Mm-hmm. Um, one of them is playing a, uh, a flute. How typical. You know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> Your time to shine. <laughs> My time to shine, baby. I'm gonna uns get that loot going. Yeah, uh, you could, all right, I'll roll for their I think that they're immune, but I don't think that's the point. Actually, I don't. Oh, think I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to charm anybody. Uh, yeah, actually, I think that's a, a distinction we need to make. Is there's a difference between using that ability, which would be something like combat, or you know, like a you know action. Oh no, no. Well, it's not a combat ability. It yeah. takes too long to use it. Uh, well, anyways. Uh, but I, yeah, no, it's it's. Uh, I'm not trying to charm anybody. I'm just trying to roll a play D, some music. A D6. Uh, to see uh, with your skill how well you do. Three. Which is very good for you, uh, I was going to say. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, what is the, the song that... What, what do you start to play? Oh, I'm trying to pick up on what they're doing. Oh. Uh, they are playing a mixture of something uh, like a ballad uh, that is um, this kind of like cheerful, heroic kind of thing with these... Well, it's like this song you know that you hear right now. Um, but then it kind of like sometimes falls off into a sorrowful note and then picks back up into something uh, like this part where it just kind of like builds uh, and then it gets really heroic again. It goes back and forth like that. So uh, if you start playing your lute and join into that, you're perfectly able to harmonize with it. And uh, it digs it, uh, this, this creature, and mm -hmm. it, uh, it starts to dance with you. And they what creature? Which of the four? There's four of them. The one that has the flute. Oh, okay. Uh, and 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 another one. Uh, they've also got booze, and they uh, they start to uh, hand it off. Uh, they uh, they hand a, a thing of it to Ben, a jug of wine. Oh, this. This seems like a wonderful idea. Yeah. Well... <laughs> We're not using all those old rules that, uh, as far as flaws and stuff anymore, are we? <laughs> that was his flaw, was his booze, but it drink it a bit. Hey, it's my flaw too, with or yeah. without, with, with or without <laughs> the mechanic. Another one grabs the hands of Tharnlin and starts to try to dance with the dwarf in a circle. It says, my name is Zutski. So yeah, Tharnlin tries, but his dexterity sucks, so he's like got two left feet, literally yeah, like with a minus a dexterity, one. Make a dexterity attribute check. Yeah, roll a d20 to All give right. your dexterity. Yeah, d20 up. Oh no. 50, wow, amazingly. Oh, you made yeah. it. Oh, nice. No, no, well, no, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Dexterity is only a seven. I see, you got to go under seven. Sorry. Oh, no. Yeah, no, no. Right. Trips, um, trips, trips. Trip and, and drag, and, and she's like, <laughs> oh, well. And then she hops over to, to the next person to. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> to, to warden and starts trying to dance with warden and is like my name is Zuski. meanwhile Ben do you drink the wine oh I know better than drink fairy wine <laughs> <laughs> do you though but but I'm gonna I can't resist I'm gonna regret this I was like oh and, and he'll even say I know better to drink fairy wine than I <laughs> drink it here <laughs> <laughs> Save versus death. Save versus poison. Okay, what is my save? Oh. Stands like a tree. 
and does not move. <laughs> and as the kid introduces himself, he just, he just says, better. "Okay." Warden Warden won't dance; just stands. While, while yeah, he just he just stands. Yeah. Ziski's like, "Oh well," and then like goes on to dance with someone else. Did you make it? All right. Uh, I always forget. I want to roll. And yeah, I don't think you made it. You got to yeah, you got to roll make high. It. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, it hits you really powerfully, um, and you simply fall over unconscious. You see Ben. So it, but this is the sap we're looking for. It. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and um, I just needed to confirm if it's what we needed. And yes, great day sap. Uh, I think I think um, Basha. And Warden, since you haven't drunk anything, you're not haven't been falling over, and you're not playing the loot. I think you can make a Wisdom check. All right. Success. A success. What did you get, Warden? Yes. Nice. Okay. Uh, you all notice uh, that there are taps, which is like a, um, uh, there's a, uh, what would look like if you put a, uh, a metal thing into the trees uh, to try to get, you know, try to get sap from it. But instead, it looks like it's part of the tree and has actually grown into it. And it's naturally and very slowly coming out and collecting into pans. And um, meanwhile, uh, the other, two of the, the person, the satyr with the flute, and uh, two others are dancing around Edward, just having a great time. And uh, the, one of them takes the jug from uh, uh, from Ben, pats Ben on the shoulder with a big smile, and hops over to uh, to Basha and offers some wine. Uh, Basha just kind of shakes his head slowly. And then uh, looks over at uh, at Warden and makes eye con like like tries to make eye contact with Warden and then with his eyes kind of looks over to the pans. I like to think that Rabbi groans in disappointment as the jug is pulled out from his hand. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're you're just on, like drunk and unconscious, so you're kind of moaning and having oh. like drunk dreams and stuff, and yeah, yeah. Warden acknowledges the look and is a nod in return. All right, Basha um, turns around and starts going the way we came. Um, he's gonna. Well, the the idea is he's, he's looking like he's leaving, and then he kind of wants to uh, make his way around and sneak up and see if we can't collect some of that and cause a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> so you're gonna try to you're gonna try to sneak up and steal the sap. Is that the goal? While yeah. he's doing that, can I just ask them about it? <laughs> yeah. Like like try to try to like distract them and like make a discussion about the same thing. So if he fails, maybe I succeed, or if I succeed or failed, and maybe he succeeds, kind of thing. Yeah, that's a pretty solid plan, and it distracts them. So I'll tell you what I'll do, uh, Basha. You can make your sneaking in the woods check on a d6 and a dexterity check on the dexterity check you can subtract two from the result but hold that result for now uh, for the sneaking and meanwhile what do you say word what do you say to them this stuff seems great i mean uh how did, did you find it here did you put it here what came first you were the set oh my name is zormin and my people have danced in these woods for a hundred years. A long time. Is it? Oh. Yes, it is good. Would you like to try some? No thanks, I'm lactose intolerant. We can offer it freely to try, but people cannot take our wine from the woods. These are these are our woods and we were given it to it. Uh, it was given to it given to us uh, by our benefactor. Oh, but does it still work when it's outside of the wood? Oh, yes, very much so. Tell us about your benefactor. Oh, uh, 
Well, um, <clears throat> uh, over a hundred years ago, uh, my people were enslaved and uh, we were set free here on, on the edge of the worlds. And uh, now we, uh, we dance and sing, but uh, when winter comes, we cry. And uh, what happened a hundred years ago? Oh, uh, well, uh, a whole lot of things, but for my people, uh, a, uh, a monster once enslaved us, and uh, we were set free, and we were doomed to only dance and smile, and um, uh, my elders say that that is, uh, it's not possible to be happy when you don't have a choice. And yes, now what, what, what was it that had you enslaved? It was a, uh, it was a magic, uh, a, uh, a kind of uh, a fairy demon god uh, that had enslaved uh, my people. Uh, but I am young. Uh, as I said, I, I'm here from these woods uh, now for the past hundred years. Uh, um, and uh, what do you think of this dragon? A dragon? Yes, a dragon. Oh. Well, someone must have done something very awful for there to be a dragon, because there are no dragons here in this in this world. Oh, well, there's a dragon now. Oh, then someone must have done something very terrible. Yes, that's what you said. Uh, however, <laughs> now it falls to us uh, to try to get rid of the dragon. You understand? Yeah, that happens every hundred years or so. Every hundred years. Now... Are you, do you know Vivian? Oh, Vivian the cat. Yes. Well, we've heard of her, yes. Yes. Well, we've met Vivian. Uh, she wasn't a cat at the time. But we've met her, and she told us that something that would be very helpful in ridding the forest of the dragon would be the wonderful... <laughs> wine that is made from these beautiful trees. You would like some of our wine. Yes. Well, but... we, we understand that we may need it to to combat the dragon. What were you saying, Warden? I say, uh, as long as removing it from the forest isn't an action bad enough to benefit another dragon. You know, if bad actions cause dragons, then Hopefully we don't make a new dragon by trying to deal with this dragon. Oh, well, that remains to be seen, uh, not by me, but by others. Uh, and meanwhile, Bashad, did you pass your tests? All right, let's see. First one. Well, that one. Nope. And... Minus two. No, nope. wow. What's your dexterity? Well, if it's, if it's minus two, then I go to then I pass the dex. Okay. But I didn't pass the uh, the stealth. You uh, snap some branches, and uh, um, Zormin uh, he looks over um, and uh, into the woods, and then looks around for a moment, smiles, and then looks back. Um, and it looks like you can probably gather some of the sap. Um, okay. But. Here's the de deal with the devil. You didn't pass uh -oh. your skill check. So, I'm going to leave it to a last attribute check whether or not you can make it out. I'm going to add a final uh, skill check barrier. Um, okay. And, so, I roll uh, a... D20, but don't do it yet. Uh, I'm going to okay. pan back to Warden. Uh, were, were you saying something, Warden? You were saying you hoped that uh, taking no. the sap would not be worse than whatever made the dragon in the first place. Um, um, what's Starnland doing? He gets back up from the ground. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to observe them some more. You're going to, okay. Try yeah. to dance with them. Yep. Okay. Uh, mm. and, and what about... Yeah, even because I tripped last time. <laughs> ben, meanwhile, is sleepily... And clapping. Does Ben snore? 
Yeah, I was just about to. Yeah, Ben snores <laughs> in the middle of. That's, that's, that's my contribution. Ed, Edward, were you gonna say something? Yes. Well, you understand this. This dragon is a dire threat to uh, all these lands now. Ah. Okay. And then, uh, all right, Bashaw, you can roll your d twenty. Okay. Here goes. Yes. All right. You're able to sneak out with a pint. Uh, what are you using as a container, actually? Uh, I've got the oil. Dealing. Oil thing? D- dump out an oil flask? Yeah. Okay, you dump out the oil. Or actually, just, well, it's probably safer if I use my water skin. All right, you dump out the water. Hopefully you don't yeah. have to sleep overnight tonight, Which, uh, but it's all right. I got wine. Yeah, you got wine. Good <laughs> like, if you, you don't have to dump out your oil, why don't you just put the the wine in your lantern this is a container in the lantern to fill with <laughs> oil you spill it with it's that instead is it a whole pint i don't know how lanterns work you were saying they're pretty big eh? it, it so actually it's a good point uh basically uh but uh i'm gonna i'm gonna mess that up no no I'm gonna say yeah, that works. You can you can put the oil in the lantern. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say that works. Okay, that's okay. different. That's so, clever. <laughs> yeah, that is that's really clever. Yeah. So all right, so you put the, uh, a whole uh, thing of um, oil in uh, a, a worth of, of, of the sap. Uh, you, while they're doing all this stuff, you're able to just hold it there. It takes forever. Your arm starts to burn. From trying to hold it up, and finally you get enough. You think, and you take it and you seal it, and you disappear into the brush. Meanwhile, I'll pan back to uh, to Edward. Uh, he says, uh, "the uh, the satyr." He says, "Well, if you're willing to trade something, we could offer some of our wine. That's the that's the arrangement that we have in place here. A fair <laughs> trade for for the wine." Uh, I'm sorry. What, what were you saying, Jake? I said I have some rope. Uh, I didn't. I don't have any good trade goods on me. Mm. I have some rope. If that well, would be any use. Hmm. Do you have a part of someone that you loved? This is very powerful. Why? Can I look for a feather, um, which might have fallen off a raven, and look if there's any, like, tucked in his schmock or something? Yeah, that's pretty good. I'll say that uh, you have that uh, on a on a 2 and 6 on a d6. Okay. That's adorable. I should have said that past. I, never mind, don't roll. That's awesome. I love it. What is that? Yeah. I, I like it anyway. That's that's beautiful. That's so good. Uh, he he likes that bird that he found the raven because he's yeah, a fisherman. I found the raven and put it in my fisherman shack, and I was like, that's probably the only thing that he's attempted to care for in some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you offer them the bird's feather. Uh, he says, I can tell that you love this person very much. Um, so. Uh, very well, and they uh, they offer you some of the wine to keep. Um, okay, and, and it's on container, right? So yeah. I can just put that. Okay, because I have one slot left in my inventory. So. All right. <laughs> um, we're almost out of time, so uh, I will say if well, do you? I'll, let me ask you this: Do you want to return to Brandonsford, or do you want to head out somewhere and camp here to continue exploring? Do you want to go back first? Or, we need to go back. That's okay. my vote. If you if you do, I will say in this case that you make it back to Brandonsford. Um, the uh, the satyrs they give you a cheerful goodbye, a parting, um, and uh, you're able to return. You now have two of these things of sap of the tree sap. Lovely. And uh, everybody starts leaving, and uh, you know they, Bishaza weighs down the uh, the trail, and then when they finally catch up, he just kind of raises his lantern and <laughs> shakes it a bit, and then sees that they have 
some already and just kind of slumps down a bit, shrugs. <laughs> no, it's great. Now we've got twice as much. It's wonderful. <laughs> Someone, probably maybe Tharnlin, uh, is with treasure. Mm-hmm on the way back and has a slow movement yes. speed because someone has draped over their shoulder the, the, body, the body of Ben. Probably maybe Bashar or Edward. Probably Edward then. <laughs> I'll take uh, I'll take Ben. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. Uh Ben, you sleep for um for a while. Six hours. Oof, oh, okay. uh, it is uh late it is nighttime uh when you wake up in your bed back in Brandonsford somehow. And that's where we'll stop tonight.